Hello, travel friends. Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the five biggest mistakes people make when visiting Versailles. Your first mistake is rushing the palace. What people need to understand is that all of Versailles is not created equal. The best parts of Versailles are the living quarters, the chambers, mm -hmm. uh, the hall of mirrors. Mm -hmm. So when you go into the palace of Versailles, you're gonna be like, okay, okay. And then you're gonna like see ridiculousness, right? Like this like extravagance and it's just like, whoa. And then I think a lot of people, ourselves included, you kind of think like the rest of Versailles is exactly like that, yeah. but it, it really isn't. A lot of people should take their time enjoying the chambers, right? Just like mm -hmm. take it all in, take in the extravagance of the living quarters, the hall of mirrors, and know that like sort of after the hall of mirrors, it kind of falls off quite a bit. If you're like outside the palace and you visit the Petit Trianon or the Trianon mm -hmm. and all the other places, they're worth seeing, but the palace, the living quarters, that's like up there. Everything else is kind of like really cool, but that's all. <laughs> well, that kind of leads us to our, our next tip, which is not planning the attractions of Versailles and around Versailles. So similar to what Jimmy just said, not all things are equal. Aside from the palace, you have the gardens. You also have the Queen's Hamlet, the Petit Trion, the Grand Trion, all of these other buildings that will take time. So you're gonna wanna map that out on what is your must see. Right. The gardens are free, so you can always come back for those. But I think it, it, it is something that you need to be aware of because you're not going to be able to do the palace, the gardens, all of the external buildings in one day. You probably can't do or see all of the gardens, just the gardens in a day, mm -hmm. unless you had a bike or something like mm -hmm. that. Everything is just really massive. The major attractions, the palace, the Petit Trianon, the Trianon, they're, they're really spread out. Mm -hmm. So it does take a good amount of walking to get from one place to the other. I would just be prepared to not see everything. See the palace, maybe see a few things in the gardens, maybe see a Trianon <laughs> or, or so, uh, but, but realize that you're probably not going to see everything. And I think that when people like try to crunch in everything, you, you're you gonna be like overstressed, you're gonna be time crunched, and you're, you're really gonna not enjoy it yeah. as much. Your feet are gonna hurt. It's a, it's a lot of walking. Even in comfortable shoes, your feet will hurt. Okay, so the third tip we have is expect the unexpected. So say that you planned your Paris trip months in advance and you have like a whole day dedicated to Versailles. Before you hop on the train to go to Versailles, maybe a few days before your actual you know, trek there, check the train schedules, right? Mm -hmm. Check um, the Versailles website. Mm -hmm. See if there are anything that, you know, it's closed or it's uh, being reconstructed and not open to the public, right? Sometimes there are like train strikes, metro strikes, bus strikes, it's like... It's France, there's always a strike. <laughs> we say this because when we were there, the day we were gonna go to Versailles, there was a train strike and we weren't able to go, right. which was fine, we, we just switched it to another day. Yeah. But there are all these different things that can that can happen, whether it be attractions being closed. We went in the fall, so the fountains weren't running. A lot of the statues were covered for yeah. winter. Mm -hmm. So expect the unexpected. Just double check before you before you head there. If there is a transportation strike or delay or something, that can really change your trip. That means mm -hmm. that you might have to start your journey an hour or two hours in advance to get the right route that mm -hmm. goes to Versailles. When Barb mentioned the statues being covered and the fountains not mm -hmm. on during the colder months, uh, that's definitely true. You know, you kind of have to juggle between going during the summer where the statues are uncovered, the fountains are on, but also you have like a bazillion tourists mm -hmm. and visitors around you, or you go during the winter months where like the flowers aren't really blooming, the statues are covered, the fountains aren't on, but you have less people around. And it's also still gorgeous. I think that's the thing. Even if you're not seeing blooming flowers, right, right. it's still fascinating yeah. to see. Our next biggest mistake is underestimating the gardens. 
These are huge gardens. If you're trying to walk, it's going to be very hard to walk all of the gardens. There are access to golf carts if you do have a mobility impairment. They're big. The gardens are just really, really big. I would compare it to Central Park in New York. Just this massive, massive garden. And know that the palace, the Trianons, like all those things are really, really spread out. Mm -hmm. So schedule in some time walking between places. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it best. I mean, it's like King Louis' personal Central Park. While they're beautiful and manicured, they are vast. Okay, so this brings us to our final mistake. And this one's, this one's really easy. It is not taking advantage of the free audio guides. So there are two free audio guides that you have access to. When you purchase your ticket in advance, you will then be directed to the Versailles app. In this app, it's a great free audio guide. So download it on your phone, bring your headphones, it walks you through the palace very well. The other free audio guide that we love is going to be Rick Steves. The Rick Steves one, I, I really like. I feel that, you know, you get more of his personality in there, right? The Versailles app might be a little bland mm -hmm. or a little bit stiff for some. And then I feel that Rick Steves is just like a, a lighter thing as you like, it's a moseying kind of guide that kind of gives you, uh, you know, uh, the information that you want, but you're not overloaded and you can casually listen to Rick Steves as you're just, you know, taking in all the sites. All right. Well, those are our five biggest mistakes when visiting Versailles. If you have made a mistake that we didn't mention, please comment below, let us know. And as always, like and subscribe and happy travels. Bye.